are now underway for the funeral of Minister of Public Service and Administration Collins Chabani. He will be buried tomorrow at the Shukundu village, his home village in Limbobo. SABC News reporter Criselda Lewis is there. Criselda, good morning to you once again. As people go about their daily activities there, locals continue to pay tribute and uh, funeral arrangements, as we said, are well underway. I believe you do have a traditional authority with you there this morning. What can you tell us? Well, that's right, Ayanda, as those tributes uh, continue to pour in. There's so many stories here that I'm hearing about the late minister. Many are saying that Collins Chabane is a man who never forgot where he came from. Let's chat now to Hossi Mhinga, who knew Collins Chabane and his family, knew Collins Chabane when he was a young boy, and also the brothers of Collins Chabane also grew up right in front of you, Hossi Mhinga. Thank you very much for your time this morning, Hossi. You were telling me just a few minutes ago about this young man that you got to know was involved in the struggle. You were surprised about the zest that this young man had for politics. When did you first meet Collins Chabane? Quite honestly, I only met him for the first time after he was released from, from, from Robben Island. Because by the time he got arrested, I was still I was in Johannesburg. I was practicing as a lawyer. Uh, but my father told me that uh, in 1980, Collins came to, 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 to inform him that he was leaving for exile. And uh, he encouraged him. He said, go, but look after yourself. You know, that, that, that aspect of having to, 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 to respect the elderly, to me, it was very, very, very crucial. Because he woke, before he left for, for, for exile, he told my father. And my father and his father were like uh, they, they were like twin brothers they they used to live to, uh, together i grew up with actually two of his elder brothers uh, richard and patrick that collins was very young you know I, I only met him for the first time after being released from prison what kind of man was he after the release certainly the scars of apartheid he returned with but the contribution that he's made to this community Oh, Collins was, was excellent. You know, I, I actually was marveling at his intellect. You know, he was straightforward, but very, very, very humble. Uh, I remember being one of those who became the first members of parliament during the Mandela era. And when he came and became the, the, the MEC here in the, in the Pompu, that's when I, I interacted with him. I'll always... Uh, you know, ask him and always consult him in every in every aspect. He will always give me the right answers. To me, he, he's really a fighter. He had the intellect. He had, well, a lot of people knew him as a politician, as a musician, mm. but they don't know Collins, the the, the prince, mm. because he's actually of royal blood. Each one minga. Yes, his father is actually. The, the Chabanis are the first born to Minga, but unfortunately the predeceased, uh, the, 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 the late Minga, that's why the chieftainship that moved to the, to the second house, that's where I belong. Let's talk about this legacy. We spoke to young people on yes. their way to school saying they're going to miss Minister Chabani for all that he did, that he done for this community. How do you also, as the traditional authority in this area, plan to make that legacy last young people to know who Collins Chabani was? He, co <clears throat> he contributed a lot in the development of this area. Definitely, that's one thing for sure. Because we always consulted him in whatever decision he wanted to take, whatever thing that he wanted to, to have a discussion with government, we'll always uh, uh, interface, interface with him. He showed us how to do, go about it and to make sure that whatever we do, we do is according to, to the law. He never, he never actually wanted to mislead anybody. To him, you know, honestly, I've, I've learned so much. I remember in 2013, we went to visit him. My uncle, two of my senior uncles, my, we went to visit him in, in Waterkloof during a celebration of one day school in Atreville. And we stayed with him for th about three days. And during that period, I learned so much how we can go about, how we can develop this area. You remember, he's the first person to come with the, the road agency when he was MEC for public works. 
there's still a lot of things that we're talking that we're going to develop this area to make sure that kids go to school. There, there's, you know, you can talk the whole day about the development, the developmental aspect of Collins. He always wanted to help people. Never, never selfish about himself. Well, that's exactly the kind of person we've been hearing about here, Ayanda. Unselfish, a musician, a giver, somebody who wanted to do so much for this community. And we're hearing here from the traditional authority, certainly, that that legacy will continue here in Shukundo. Of course, the family going to Pulukwane to go and view the body of the late minister. The body is expected to return back here to the home later this afternoon as final preparations get underway for tomorrow's funeral. Thank you so much for that update, Criselda. No doubt more of those stories will come through as we continue to look at the life and times of that man.